Hey, Jocelyn with Walter's World, and today I'm going to make for you tiramisu. Uh, this tiramisu recipe came from my friend Nana, who is born and raised in this small town in the Veneto region of Italy, and um, one, I love to cook with Nana. She's so much fun to cook with. She's like one of those people who's just always a ray of sunshine. She's like the most positive, happy person I've ever met. So I love cooking with her. I have never made uh, tiramisu with her. She's just given me her recipe and her tips and hints. So I've done this on my own. This next trip to Italy, we will be doing this together, which I really look forward to because every time I've been in her kitchen, I've learned something amazing. So I'm gonna make this today just simply because I am missing Italy. So what we're gonna start with is some coffee and lady fingers, and then you'll have a mascarpone and cream mix together. Um, and kind of all this stuff goes in here. I don't have my mascarpone out. Um, or as Mars Capone, as most Americans say, I don't really know where that comes from. Like, I don't know how people switch that word up to be so very different than the way it's written. But anyway, we do. Um, so a couple of things when making tiramisu. One, I like to make my coffee ahead of time. Mark and I don't drink coffee. So I've made mine in a briki. It's a, it's a Greek way of making coffee. It's very strong, similar to espresso. Um, but a little bit different. So the only way I have to really make good strong coffee is my briki from Greece and uh, this is the traditional way of making coffee in Greece and it makes a really good strong coffee. Greek coffee, I, I don't have Greek coffee but I have lavazza which is Italian coffee which is totally appropriate for tiramisu, right? And this is an espresso ground so when you make uh, coffee, Greek coffee, it's very very fine and just like espresso. So you put a heaping teaspoon uh, in the briki and then pour in enough water for like a demi tasse cup, which is just like a little espresso cup. I'm going to make two at once. That's about all my briki can handle. And I'm probably gonna have to make two of these because I need about a cup, maybe a little bit more. I always make a little extra for my tiramisu um, just in case, I don't know, if I'm feeling a little coffee-ish. So you just put those in there, um, kind of give it a little swirl, and then put this to boil. And it needs to be like a really slow cook. It'll get nice and frothy up at the top. That's when you've got it really good. So I'm going to give it just a little bit of the stir because I got that a little, put a little bit on the side. So just let it sit there, cook. Um, and then when it starts to foam, that's when it's finished. And I will just put it into this so that it's easy to pour later. I may end up brushing my lady fingers depending upon how, um, how soft they are. So I've bought my lady fingers, right? And if they're soft, then I'm gonna kind of brush it on. If they're a little bit harder, like if they're a little bit stale, which sometimes happens, you dunk them. Um, but you don't ever want to dunk the soft ones because they'll literally just fall right apart and that would make for yucky tiramisu. So we'll just get to doing this and then we'll get back to the rest of it. This has started to sort of boil and you can see it's got like a nice little foam. So I'm gonna turn off the fire and this so you didn't know you were getting a lesson in Greek coffee on top of tiramisu today. So when you pour this out a little bit of grounds will come too but those will be sort of toward the end usually. And then um, some people use Grand Marnier, some people use cognac, you can use rum and that's what I'm using today and I'm using a Jamaican rum that we actually we went to this distillery when we were in Jamaica and bought this bottle and um, brought it back with us. So I'm gonna use that. I think the flavor of this particular rum will go really well with everything else that's going on in this, um, in this kind of grouping here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and I'm gonna start by dealing with my coffee. First of all, it's not quite cool enough, but it'll be all right. We'll be, it'll be fine. So, well, I'll do that. Okay, so for the um, for the coffee and rum mix, I'm gonna do about two tablespoons of, um, what is that, about 
10 mils maybe of rum. I don't know, my, um, I'm not always very good at that. Um, switching back and forth between metric and imperial. So I'm just gonna put that into the rum, or into, I'm just gonna put the rum and coffee together and oh, it smells good. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a stir, but because this is Greek coffee, there are grounds in the bottom of this. That's the way Greek coffee comes out. You probably can't see it, but it's um, it's rather thick at the bottom. And I'm just gonna put this in a really shallow dish. I'm pouring slowly to um, alleviate getting too many grounds in there. If I were um, an old Greek yaya, I would probably be able to then look at this and tell you this tell you the future there are old Greek women that do um, readings of of coffee grounds if you're ever in Greece and you come across it it's pretty it's pretty comical I've never had it done I don't really put much stock in that but um, it's kind of interesting that they do it so what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna dip our lady fingers in it and um, if you have soft lady fingers you want to dip them really quickly or maybe even brush it on um, mine are kind of like somewhere in the middle. Um, I did buy my lady fingers because I'm a terrible baker. I can cook anything, but don't ask me to bake you something because I, I don't know, I just can't. There's there's something wrong in my brain, it can't happen. So um, I'm just gonna dip mine really quickly and then line a pan with them. Okay, so here are my lady fingers. And first layer, dip quickly and set them in flat side down in the pan. And we're just gonna go through all of these and um, try to cover all the bits of your pan. You might have to break some up and kind of squish them in however you need to, um, but just make sure that your whole, the bottom of the whole pan is covered. I am using an um, 11 by seven um, I, and that's about good for this size recipe. And this is a really easy recipe to change, um, to double it up or, you know, cut it in half, whatever. So I'm just gonna do, and I probably have, I have a little more, I probably have three quarters of a cup of coffee in there. Um, and you know what? You can do a lot more than that. You can make this as coffee-like or as uncoffee-like as you want. Mark does not like coffee. like doesn't like coffee at all in any way, shape, or form. I, on the other hand, love it, but I only love it when it's really good coffee. Um, I, I hardly ever drink coffee in the US. It's kind of crazy. All of my friends are such coffee people, and I typically drink coffee only in Italy or Greece, and, occasion, and definitely Central and South America, because that's where the coffee comes from, and it's really good. Um, but generally speaking, I like espresso, I like Greek coffee, I like things that are really strong, and I just don't find very much of that. Okay, so I have my lady fingers all in here. You can kind of see from the bottom, they're all nicely, evenly soaked. And I'm just gonna set that over here for a little while with my coffee and rum mix. And we're gonna work on the filling. So there are different there are different schools of thought on tiramisu as to whether or not it has heavy cream in it. Um, whether Some people use just egg whites and whip those um, kind of almost like a meringue. But Nana's recipe calls for cream. Nana is born and raised in Italy, so I'm going with what she tells me to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna crack um, a few eggs and we're gonna separate them. So, there's one, we're gonna do four eggs and we are going to whip the yolks with about a quarter cup of sugar. I've separated my whites and yolks and I'm just gonna go whip up these yolks with a quarter cup of sugar and I'm gonna whip them until they're really light yellow. So we'll just go ahead and do this. Okay, so in go our four egg yolks and quarter cup of sugar. And now whip these um, until they're about three times their size in volume. Like so, 
make note of how much is in there at the beginning and pay attention to it. And they'll get like a really nice light yellow color too. Okay, so that's the color we're looking for with yellow eggs. If you have orangier eggs because um, your yolks were orangier, you can kind of get an idea of what that change looks like. So these are finished and I'm going to scrape this into a different bowl. I found my spatula that someone hid Children like to put things away where they don't go. I bet your kids do that too. So I am just scraping all this right in this big bowl. And we're gonna deal with all of that in just a little bit. And I'm gonna wipe this bowl out to get all the egg mix out of it. I know a lot of people have qualms about raw eggs, but the heat generated when you whip these actually makes them safer to eat. I'm not a scientist, just gonna say that. Okay, so we are ready to whip the cream and I'm gonna do about three quarters of a cup um, of heavy whipping cream. I find that it works best if your whipping cream is really cold. I think it, I don't know why, but it seems to whip better. So I have three quarters cup of heavy whipping cream in here and I'm gonna add to it um, about a quarter cup of sugar. And I'm just gonna start whipping this a little bit and let it get kinda, I don't want it quite at, at soft peaks yet, but I want it to have a little more body before I throw the, the um, sugar in. I just find that it whips up a little bit better, so I'm gonna do that now. So my heavy cream and sugar are now at sort of a soft peak and they're not quite holding a sharp point yet. So I'm gonna let this whip for just a second or two more and I'm going to slowly put this mascarpone in just like bit by bit and it'll become like a spreadable sort of mix and then we're gonna fold that into our sweetened egg yolks. So here we go. Okay, I've made a mess. And also, something that is almost like butter. If you have ever made butter, you're almost at that point. It's really, it's like a nice stiff sort of thing. It really holds its, um, its, it's tough. Um, but it's not, it's not as solid. It's like a whipped butter. So I'm just, that's about the point I need to be at. And I'm gonna just clean this off a bit. That's what it should look like. And we are going to carefully fold it into our sweetened egg yolks. And I've used one whole container of mascarpone. It's um, eight ounces. And I love things that come right in the right size container, so I don't have to measure them. All right, so this is the only hard part of making tiramisu, in my opinion. Folding things together is difficult. And I don't know why, but I have a hard time with this. So if this is the worst part, we're doing okay. I'm hoping that when I go see Nana this summer, um, she will be able to give me better tips on how to fold this particular mixture. So if you can see, you just gotta be delicate with it and take your time. I'm gonna be stirring this for like five minutes, slowly and carefully, sweeping them together. Okay, so I've got all of this mixed together. It's been folded together really nicely, you can see. It's light, pale yellow, it's really soft and creamy. And I am just going to, because these were really soft, I did not dunk my lady fingers wholeheartedly, right? I just kind of got a little on the bottom. So um, I'm going to go ahead and brush on a little bit of our coffee and rum mix onto the tops of them, just so they're not real dry. And then we're gonna take about half of this on top. So 
we've got one layer perfectly done, all ready to go, and I am just going to dip these this second layer of lady fingers one by one and line them up. I'm actually gonna go the other direction. I don't know why, just because I feel like it. And I'm gonna brush mine again on the top. Instead of dunking them all the way through, I'm just going to do it this way. I also really hate when I get um, tiramisu and it's super soggy. Sometimes tiramisu is super soggy because people don't refrigerate it long enough. Once this is finished, you should be able to eat it within four or five hours, but I really suggest putting it in the fridge and leaving there overnight. So make this a day ahead of time. Um, and because you're using so many bowls and things and it's kind of messy, it's actually a great thing to make ahead of time. Okay, so I had to make more coffee because I suck. Um, but as I was doing so, I was thinking I should really tell you, you don't have to use rum or cognac or any other kind of alcohol um, to make this. You can do it simply with coffee. And if you're not a coffee person, there are recipes out there, I know because I've seen them, um, that have different types of things to substitute for that. I'm just, you know, like I said, I'm just going by Nana's recipe. And uh, so, and also her recipe, um, she sent it to me all in Italian. My Italian's not awesome. So I translated the most, like the majority of like what I could get through. And Mark went through some of it for me. And then we used Google Translate for a couple of words because if you've ever lived abroad or spent much time trying to cook from recipes in another language, food things are really difficult. Um, there's not always a good, a good real translation. Um, sometimes, you know, it'll say one thing and it means something very different. Um, you know, like when we were in China and we ordered food that said doctor in box and I'm like, great, we're eating Doctor Who. Um, whatever the heck it was we were eating was really good. But just know that I'm going to do this again one day with Nana, and I'm going to have her show us how to do this really well. And I bet hers will be a little bit different because my translation is not awesome. Um, but we will we'll be fine. This is, I've made this before like this, and everybody loves it, so um, it'll, be, it'll be all good. So because I've got a lot of grounds in this, I'm gonna kinda just brush, I'm kinda tipping it so I don't get a ton of grounds because nobody wants to eat coffee grounds. So, all right, this top layer, I'm putting a little bit more coffee on than the bottom layer, simply because the bottom layer gets uh, mushier faster than that top layer, so I don't mind putting a little extra on the top. And again, we're just gonna top this with our cream. This is such an easy dish. I mean, really, like it's such a decadent thing. And we Americans talk about how great so-and-so, you know, oh, this restaurant, that restaurant. And you think it's like this thing that's so like, complicated, but it's really not, especially if you cheat like me and you buy your lady fingers. If you're making lady fingers, it might be a little more, a little more complicated. But you know what? This is just such an easy, beautiful dish to make. You can like, you have friends over and they're like, you made what for us? And they're so excited. And then you start talking about Italy and the great places you've been, um, you know, and the wonderful friends that you've made all over Italy. And next thing you know, they're going to Italy with you and you're like just having a grand old time together in some random town in Italy. So you know what? Make this for your friends and go to Italy. Why not? So this is pretty much finished. Now we just have to do the dusting of the cocoa powder. When you do cocoa powder on top of this, it's unsweetened cocoa powder. Um, mine is Dutched, Dutch processed. I have no idea what Dutched means, but I like it better than I like a lot of other um, cocoa powders. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna pour a good chunk in there and I'm gonna use a sifter to just Cover the top. Mm, that smells so good. You know what that smells like? It smells like Ecuador. 
we went to a really cool chocolate processing place in Ecuador and oh my gosh, it was just absolutely incredible. All right, so now that we've taken a tour through Europe and apparently South America and the Caribbean too, uh, we have tiramisu. It's all done and I am just going to cover this lightly and pop it in the fridge for at least four hours. But like I said, it's a lot better if you can leave it in there overnight so it really sets nice and firm. It's a lot easier to cut that way too. Okay, so it's the next day. This uh, tiramisu has been sitting in the fridge for about 24 hours. Um, I made a little boo-boo when I was wrestling this uh, silicone lid cover thing on and it kind of made a dig in the middle of my tiramisu so it might not look super pretty, we'll see. Um, yeah, see, nice little hole right there in the middle. And we'll just slice in and see how it looks. Oh shoot. <laughs> it's always hard to get the first piece out, isn't it? And I'm not like a TV chef, so it's probably not gonna be really pretty. <laughs> All right, we'll take another piece out and see how it looks. this time. That might be better. Oh, that looks good, huh? We did okay. All right, so find out how it tastes because that's really what's important. Doesn't matter how it looks. Mm-hmm. Muy bien. Muy tu bien. No. Hang on, what do I say? In Italian? Molto bene. Molto bene. <laughs> Molto bene. Oh my gosh, I'm so dumb. But this is not dumb. And it's really good. So I am going to have to thank Nana for the recipe. And um, hopefully she and I will get to make this together next time I'm in Italy. And oh my gosh, so tasty. So I hope that you guys um, go ahead and try to make this because it's really not as difficult as it seems. Um, you know, anything that doesn't require my baking is a really good thing. All right, so see you later. Ciao. Mmm. Huh? Not bad. It's whipped cream and sugar and mascarpone. I open my eye. 